With a new Pokemon game, a new champion arrives. But the newest Pokemon game, Scarlet and Violet Brothers, probably the worst champion we've ever seen in Gita. Ooh, you suck! From having probably the most lackluster team a champion has ever seen, as well as all around not being the most interesting designed character, I wanted to take a look back at the Galar region's champion, Leon. Even though Ash just defeated him in the Masters tournament, I still wanted to find out if he could become champion in one of the hardest ROM hacks out there, Pokemon Radical Red. He has an amazing arsenal of Pokemon, those being Charizard, Dragapult, Rillaboom, Cinderace, in Teleon, Seismitoad, Rhyperior, Haxorus, Mr. Rhyme, and Aegislash. We're going to try and bring out every single Pokemon's full potential and make Leon champion once again. I feel like Leon's gotten a lot of hate over the years, but in my opinion, he is a very cool looking guy and a pretty epic champion too despite having probably the worst sense of fashion anybody's ever seen. If we could smash one like for his shirt number, that would be amazing too. And also let me know what your favorite Generation 8 Pokemon was. With all of that out of the way, let's take on Pokemon Radical Red as Leon. Our rival is of course going to be our little brother Hop. He definitely isn't the best rival out there, but at least he's better than the guys from Pokemon X and Y. Why are you bullying me? Just before I'm about to step foot into the grass, Professor Oak drags me away by my ear to his lab and forces us to pick Game Freak's favorite Pokemon, Charmander. We name our little boy here Jake and then take on our rival. Despite him having the type advantage with a Squirtle, we still managed to take him down with the help of our sharp claws and a delicious orange berry. I then took on a job as an Amazon package deliverer, and as a reward, we get our usual balls. In Viridian City, I picked up the Wise Glasses as a nice starting item for my Charmander, and I also completed a puzzle that required me to use level 5 Pokemon in order to beat a team of level 100 Shedinjas. And as a reward, we get the Poke Vial, which are 6 Poke Heals that you can use, while you're battling through routes so you don't always have to go back to the Pokemon Center. In the first couple of routes, there were no Pokemon that I could capture, so I had to head straight to Brendan, put his pet lizard on fire and steal his EXP share and stat scanner. In Viridian Forest, there was really not that much for me to see, so I headed straight to Pewter City. Over here, I was able to capture my first new team member, Axew, an adorable little dragon type that will definitely help me in my endeavors against the next two gym leaders, Faulkner and Brock, and we named her after the champion of Black and White 2, Iris. We then make our way to the museum and see that Faulkner is looking at some dead birds. So we did what Leon does best, battle. I started out with my Axew against this Rufflet and breaking swiped him a couple of times to lower his attack so I could safely bring in Charmander when Iris finally fainted. As it turns out that attack drop didn't really matter because he immediately switched out into Corvusquire. I went for Ancient Power and got pretty lucky myself by getting all of the boosts. And with these boosts, this fight just became a lot easier as I sweep through the rest of his team. With the Roost DM now in hand, I could head on over to the Pure City Gym Leader Brock. And you may have already noticed that my team is definitely not built to take on rock types. So I helped out my team by equipping Orum Bears before the battle. Iris did a ton of damage by taking out Onyx as well as severely cripple his Arcan. Eventually, he did swap that out for Geodude, and that thing went boom, taking itself, but also my Axew out. Jake then cleaned up Vulpix and Orkin by Ancient Powering both of them, so that we can gain our very first Gym Badge. He also powered up a lot more by evolving into Charmeleon, and we buffed up the team even more with Ramco the Timpoil that we found in Mount Moon. Speaking of Mount Moon, whatever happened to Seymour? Is he still just stuck in that cave, examining Clefairies? Maybe we'll find out in Ash's last few episodes, as his story finally comes to an end. No, no I'm not crying, let's just get back on with the video. We defeated the Team Rocket Executive Archer right at the end of the cave without much trouble, and then we arrived in Cerulean City where I completed another puzzle and unlocked myself the ability to relearn moves. Just as I'm about to cross Nugget Bridge, we get ambushed by our rival and brother, Hop. Jake just hurled some rocks at his Pokemon, incinerated a couple more of them, and ended the battle really quickly. As a reward, we basically get the HM for flying the Poke Rider, and we then enter the Nugget Bridge, and after just one trainer, our Timpole evolves into a Palpitoad. But in order to take on Misty, I knew I had to do some EV grinding. 
which is a very easy thing to do if you just look up which Pokemon gives which EV, then you use the Macho Brace which you get from this Karate Master, and then you just use the Deck Snap to continually search for that Pokemon to boost your stats to infinity and beyond. Even though the cap is like 252. We get our ticket for the Boost Cruise from this Clefairy dude, and then I went to the local swimming pool to try and take on Misty. Even after over 20 plus attempts, I wasn't able to beat her. Iris would get destroyed by any ice type move, which most of her Pokemon carry. Charmeleon speaks for himself, he gets extinguished way too fast, and Palpitoad alone can't carry me through it. So I knew I needed a fourth team member. So I went back to the Nugget Bridge and captured myself an Abra. Now you might think Leon doesn't use the Alakazam line. Why are you capturing this? Well, there is a very convenient trade that he can do just outside of Diglett's cave. This guy wants an Abra, and in return he gives you a Galarian Mr. Mime, which is a Pokemon he uses. And he's the last piece of the puzzle we need to take down Misty. So after giving him some HP, special defense and special attack EVs, I finally went on my boost cruise and ran into Brendan. And we dazzled this world with Mimian's dazzling gleams. Netting us some lucky eggs which we're going to use for grinding purposes as well as the HM for cut from the ship's captain. Now it's finally time to take revenge on this pesky Misty. I started out with Iris against their first Pokemon Frogadier because I knew it was going to go for Ice Punch and my Rock Tombs would be super effective. Because the ability it uses is Protein, so every time it uses Ice Punch, it will turn into an Ice type. The next Pokemon Starmie immediately took me out with a Psy Shock, so I swapped in Palpito to use Swagger on the Starmie and confuse it. Sadly enough, I did get burned because of a Skull, but I was able to use Rest to get rid of that and heal up, and my Chesto Berry also immediately woke me up. It then luckily hit itself in its confusion, I was able to use Bulldoze on it, but just as I'm about to use another one, she swaps into Floatzel. I then swap into Jake to take a Hidden Power Grass, and I try to counter back with a Thunder Punch, but she swaps into Lantern, who absorbs it with its ability Volt Absorb. I then hit two more digs on this Lantern, but two Scalds take out my Charmeleon. I then go back into Palpito to finally finish off this Lantern with another Bulldoze. I'm then once again able to confuse the next Pokemon Starmie with Swagger, but I get taken out very quickly with Scalds. But because this Starmie is now confused, I can bring in Mimian to take it out with two more Dazzling Gleams without taking any damage, which is necessary in order to take down the last Pokemon Floatzel. I then use Icy Wind to lower his speed so I can then go for Dazzling Gleam and finish him off the next turn. And with that, we have finally earned our second Gym Badge. We all know who comes after Misty, Lieutenant Surge. And just nope, my Pokemon weren't having any of it, they were not able to even put a dent in Lieutenant Surge's team. His special attacking power was way too high and most of his Pokemon were able to outspeed mine too, so I once again needed more team members. Luckily I wasn't softlocked or anything because I just got the ability to cut down tiny little trees. This allowed me to go all the way to Rock Tunnel where I was able to capture the next team member. Maya the Rhyhorn. But it wouldn't just stop here because the entire map is almost available to us now. I travel to Lavender Town in order to unlock the EV Grind Master. Here you can grind any EV you want or you can also level up your Pokemon for a small fee. Once I was done bulking up Maya in the gym and went to Celadon City to talk to an old couple and one of them gave me a bottle of tea which I could use to get into Saffron City and pass the guards and the other one would give me random starter Pokemon eggs in trade for a couple of shards. So all I had to do was save in front of him and keep on hatching eggs until I got the Galar starters. First up, I got myself a Subble named Danny who I immediately took to the gym, grinded up and evolved into Drizzile. Then I went to a house in Saffron City that's filled with twin brothers and one of these twin brothers gives you the ability to remove EVs. So that's what I did to all the Pokemon I grinded up before that had EVs that they didn't need. Then I went back to the Shard Lover and grabbed myself a Score Bunny named Messi. Congratulations to him for winning the World Cup with Argentina. And a Grookey named Babo. We also evolved both of them into Raboot and Thwacky. And once we were done crafting our beautiful team, we went back to Lieutenant Surge. 
Starting out with my Thwacky against this electric terrain setting Pinchurchin. First going for the fake out and then taking it out with two super effective razor leaves because Pinchurchin is part water type in this game. The next Pokemon Bolt Hunt is able to take me out with Ice Fang but I bring in my Palpitoad. It isn't able to hit me for any super effective damage so my Muddy Water is doing enough for him to swap out into Vikavolt. After one more Muddy Water hits I have to swap out and sack my Axew then I can safely bring in my Raboot and go for a Fire Fang and a Flame Charge to take it out and also boost my speed. With that speed boost I'm now able to outspeed Bolt hunt and kill it with a critical hit fire fang as well. For a Lolan Raichu I decide to go for U-turn and send in Maya instead, but she got destroyed by a grass knot. I then brought in Raboot once again and went for the Sucker Punch to finally finish off Alolan Raichu. His Mega Manic trick was able to intimidate me twice, I got off one Sucker Punch doing a little bit of chip damage but then I got taken out by Volt Switch. I sent out my Mimian, took a lot of damage from Flame Burst but was able to hit a Hypnosis and then take it out with 3 more Psybeams. With the Thunder Badge acquired, we immediately go back to Celadon City and into Erika's gym. In the gym itself, my Raboot evolved into Cinderace, Thwacky into Rillaboom, Charmeleon into Charizard, Pulpitoad into Seismitoad, Axew into Fracture and then immediately into Haxorus as well, and finally Mr. Mime into Mr. Rhyme. This is shaping up to be a very menacing team to face. Ask the next gym leader Erika who felt my wrath firsthand. With Missy's football skills I was able to take down 3 Pokemon, Rillaboom, Serperior and Alolan Electrode. Her Venusaur turned into the best defender of all time and tanked a Pyro Ball while taking me out with a Giga Drain. I went into Charizard but she put me to sleep. I instead swapped into Mr. Rhyme after that because I knew she couldn't put more than one Pokemon on my team to sleep because of a Sleep Cloth that's activated. One last freeze dry took out the Venusaur, I hypnosis the last Pokemon, Meganium and then sent it back to the Ice Age where it came from with freeze dry. Four gym badges acquired, time to add Inteleon to the team because we're going to have to take down the ground type gym leader and mafia boss, Giovanni next. At first I decided to give Giovanni some money by buying a Honech and a Drippy from the game corner. I then immediately evolved my Honech into one of the most overpowered Pokemon out there, Aegislash. Its King Shield will definitely carry us through a couple of fights. I then did this <laughs> and finally made my way over to Giovanni. I started off against this Nido King and I set up a light screen, then I proceeded to take it out with a snipe shot and swap out into Messi once he brings out his fridge. I raided the fridge with a Pyro Ball just like I do with my own fridge at 4am at night and shortly after he brought in his Mega Kangaskhan, so I swapped out into Aegislash because I knew it was going to go for Fake Out. I was able to set up one Swords Dance and hit an Iron Head before I had to swap out into Charizard because otherwise my Aegislash was dead. Charizard then took out the Kangaskhan with a flamethrower but the next Pokemon Hunchgrow has a very scary set. Every move that it will use is going to be a critical hit. So yeah, my Charizard got utterly destroyed by a drill peg. I then tried to take it out with my Mimian's freeze dry but I got outsped and killed by Night Slash. So instead I had to bring in Messi again and Pyro Ball it in the face. Luckily we got a critical hit, not that I think it mattered, but the last Pokemon is Infernape, Starter vs Starter. I went for Acrobatics and tanked a close combat. It manages to hang on with its Focus Sash, but I'm able to Sucker Punch the next turn to outspeed and win the battle against Giovanni. Then we went to the Spooky Town where we get ambushed by a shiny Alola Marowak with its stats boosted. This fight kind of works like the totem battles in Pokemon Sun and Moon and definitely don't underestimate this guy because he's a powerhouse. Anyway, a snapshot, sucker punch and shadow sneak later and we can advance to Mr. Fuji. He thanks us for saving him from Team Rocket and gives me the Poke Flute. But instead to go and play music for some fat Pokemon, we first evolve our Dreepy into a Dracloak. We also manage to defeat Morty pretty quickly to get the TM for Shadow Ball. Then we go to Team Rocket's next base of operations, Sylph Co. But everybody knows by now that you just have to go to the 5th floor to pick up the key card, then go back to the 3rd floor, open up a couple of things, enter the teleporter and boom, rival battle time. The battle starts off great with my Mimian against his Staraptor. I try to go for freeze dry but he swaps out into Blastoise instead, Mega evolves it and another freeze dry later and our cannon boy is out of here. I then let Dar 
Manitan take out my Mimian and bring out the secret agents to kill it with a snapshot. This little floof ball was way stronger than I expected, as it took out my special forces with a seed bomb and a double edge. So instead I had to bring out the dragons to scorch them with flamethrower. His Electivire finished me off with Thunder Punch and I swapped into Rillaboom. I tried to hit it with a wood hammer but he swapped out into Starhaptor instead. So then it was time to do some swapping of my own by bringing in Aegislash. He swapped back and forth with Volt Switch between his Staraptor and Electivire and eventually I was able to take both of them down with Iron Heads and Shadow Sneaks, giving me access to the boss's room. It's what I thought but first we have to battle his two executives, Ariana and Archer in a double battle together with our buddy Brandon. I decided to bring Rillaboom, Aegislash and Inteleon with me for this fight. First I flinched their Incineroar with Fake Out while Masquerain took out Gothithel with Bug Buzz. Houndoom wasn't able to take me out with a Heat Wave but Masquerain countered back with a Scald finishing off Houndoom as well. I then brought in Danny and went for Snipe Shot on the Incineroar to take it out and the Aegislash just went for King Shield so he couldn't touch it. I then set up a light screen because Primarina was going to hit me very hard otherwise. This caused Masquerain to be able to hit a Giga Drain so I could hit it with a snapshot the turn after and then finally Masquerain could once again finish it off with Giga Drain. I'm very glad that Brendan is doing the heavy lifting in this fight. I killed their Mega Mawile with a critical hit snapshot and the Aegislash followed shortly after. This gave us the opportunity to go and take down Giovanni himself. He starts out with a Hippo down against my Mimian. He might have been able to set up a sandstorm, but my frost breath critical hits were more than enough to take him down. The next Pokemon was Excadrill, so I swapped that into Charizard because it went for Iron Head. Sadly enough, this Excadrill had Sand Rush, so it was able to outspeed speed my Charizard and kill me with a Rock Slide. So I then brought out my Rillaboom, went for Fake Out and then took it out with two more Drain Punches. And with all of the chip damage I took from Iron Head, he set up Garchomp perfectly to take me out with Scale Shot the next turn. So I went back into Mimian and hit the critical hit Frost Breath again. I was able to freeze it, but because of its berry, it was able to survive and take me out. Luckily, the freeze status effect has been changed to the one in Pokemon Legends Arceus, so it does damage every turn, and the Garchomp fell at the same time. And then Cinderace was able to destroy the last two Pokemon, Mega Kangaskhan and Poltegeist, with Pyro Balls. As Team Rocket's plans crumble in front of them once again, we grab our Master Ball and head on over to the next gym leader, Sabrina. But first, we take a quick stop at the Fighting Dome dojo to get our black belt. I ironically took down most of Chuck's Pokemon with a fighting type move myself in Drain Punch. And ironically after that I got the TM for Drain Punch as well as an expert belt. So let's see if Sabrina prepared for what I brought. The cool thing about the Sabrina battle is that she's basically a shiny hunter and her entire team is shiny. Leave a comment down below if you think I should do a shiny run of Pokemon Radical Red, because I would love to. I started out the battle with Bobo and Messi in order to take down her Hatterene with a Pyro Ball and a Wood Hammer. This was amazing because she wasn't able to set up Trick Room in time, so I'll be able to outspeed most of her team now. Next turn I took out her Indeedee with a Pyro Ball and also hit her next Pokemon Crawdon very hard with a Drain Punch. After getting hit with a knockoff myself, she then brought in her Ursa Luna. While the Ursa Luna protected herself, I took out the Crawdon with Acrobatics, and because of this Protect, her Flame Orb activated as well, which will work very well with her Guts ability and Facade. But then, she brought out her Porygon too, a menace of a Pokemon, because it sets up Trick Room, which means she is now able to outspeed everything I have. As in the next turn, she already takes down both of my Pokemon. I then bring in Aegislash and Mimian, I decide to go for King Shield and Frost Breath to take down the Porygon, and then she brings out her final Pokemon Mega Gardevoir. I then try to kill it with an Iron Head, but I get out sped of course, and a high horsepower kills my Aegislash. I am able to hit a critical hit Frost Breath and freeze the Gardevoir, then I can finally bring in Danny, Frost Breath and Snipe Shot that Ursaluna out of here, and when the Psychic Terrain ends, my Sucker Punch kills Gardevoir, giving me my 5th Gym Badge as well as the shiny charm. Our Draclogue then turns into his final form Dragapult and instead of taking my regular round past the pier I decided to take the bicycle road for once. This made going to Koga way faster so I think I'll be taking this route more often. But before I decided to stop by our favorite ninja teacher I first took a pit stop at the safari zone where Brendan denies us our entry. But every single cross he threw at me got pyro balled right back at him. We then entered the safari zone picking up all of the useful items there as well as the HM for surf. And then we entered the spider's web. It was time to take out Koga. His team is totally focused about being super fast. But 
we definitely have a couple of fast peeps on our side too. He starts out with a swallow, and I lead off with Aegis Slash and go for a Swords Dance. He immediately swaps out into his Gigantamax slash Mega Toxtricity. I hit it with an Iron Head and a Shadow Sneak to take it out, but we also took a major amount of damage from Overdrive. The next Pokemon, Drapion, gives me a reality check as he kills me with a single Wicked Blow. And if you thought the slaughter ended there, you're totally wrong, because my Inteleon and Rillaboom also died to this move. It then finally had to swap out because it's Choice Scarfed and had the struggle otherwise. So I bring in my Dragapult and go for a Dragon Dance. Then I proceed to take down his Greninja, Swellow, Aselgore, Drapion, and lastly his very own Dragapult, all with Dragon Darts. Then once you've defeated him, you get his Gym Badge, and if you talk to him again with a super fast Pokemon in the first slot of your party, he gives you the Toxtricity Eye and a Live Orb, which is a very useful item. I then also went back to Chuck with a very strong attacking Pokemon, and he gave me the Galadite and a Focus Sash. I then went back to Pewter City to once again smear my victory in Brock's face, and he wasn't having any of it. In a fit of rage, he attacked me for a second time. But this time I had a team equipped for his Rock and Ground types, my Seismitoad washed away his team with Muddy Waters, and as a reward for defeating him for a second time, he gave me an Aerodactylite and a Stone Edge TM. But I wasn't done there, there were a couple more gym leaders I had to visit to destroy their lives. Second on that list was Misty, and somehow putting a water type up against the water type team worked out as Dani Hydra pumped her very own Inteleon, Politoed, and Gorbis. As reward we get a free Froki which we can't use sadly enough and a Mega Gyaradosite. Lieutenant Surge was the last person to get totally destroyed by my Dragapult's Dragon Darts, and with probably the worst reward ever, we finally make our way to the Seafoam Islands, where Price's old brain got him totally into trouble. His Ice-type team started quaking in their boots once I brought out my Charizard and flamethrowered all of them. And once we get that precious Choice Scarf, we head on over to Cinnabar Island where another Johto gym leader is waiting on another beatdown. And I imagined that Jasmine here wanted her steak well done, but instead I burned it for her, just like her entire Steel-type team. We do get another amazing award in the Choice Band, and then we have to enter the Pokémon Mansion, but before we can do so, we have to battle Brendan's rival, Mei. And this is kinda how it went. Her Solrock blew up, I killed her Blaziken with Dragon Darts from Tuchima, did a ton of damage on her Mushroom Chicken, but got squashed by a Rock Slide. I then tried to take out this chicken with Pyro Ball, but she swapped out into Relicanth instead. So I went into my Relicanth killer, Babo, Woodhammered it once, and took it out. Flygon then countered back by taking me out with an Earthquake. I did a little bit of chip damage with Charizard's Air Slashes on him, but Draco Meteor got the better of me. I swapped out into Aegis Slash, but she brought out her Manectric. I set up a Swords Dance, but an Overheat was enough to one-shot me. So now it was up to Messi to once again save his country. And he did, with just three shots of Pyro Ball, he scored three goals and wiped May of the map. It's time to go through the experimental mansion where they made dittos, pick up the bald man's key and enter his gym. And he's kind of a hothead, so we're going to have to extinguish thy flame. First thing I do is lead off with Palpitoad and set up Stealth Rocks because his entire team is weak to it. He does the same thing with his Torkoal and explodes the turn after. In this turn I also set up a Rain Dance to cripple his team a bit more, then I swap out into Charizard to counter his Sunflora with an Air Slash and tank a Seed Flare. Typhlosion is then able to take me out with an Eruption, but because of my Swift Swim on Ramco, I can easily take it out the next turn with Muddy Water. For the next Pokemon Executor, I bring in Missy again and go for Pyro Ball, one-shot that thing, but his very own Cinderace then takes me out with a Sucker Punch. Then I brought in Danny and surfed my way through the last couple of Pokemon and win my 7th gym badge. After talking to Blaine again, we also get the choice specs which we're going to use. And then we travel all the way to Pewter City just to find out that Giovanni's not at his gym. Brendan instead explains to me that they're at Cerulean Cave to try and capture their failed experiment Mewtwo. After arriving there, we get in a scuffle with the two admins once again, but this time Brendan isn't there to back us up. And I've said this before in earlier runs, but this is by far my least favorite battle, because you have to face both of the admins right after each other without being able to heal. But with the power of Jake's Inferno to cripple their Mamoswine with a burn, as well as busting the next Pokemon Mimikyu's disguise. My Dragapult then finished it off with a Phantom Force. I also did some very decent damage with Dragon Darts on Houndoom, but then I got destroyed by Fiery Wrath. 
Missy then pyro balled him out of the way just like the last Pokemon Durant and we're on to Ariana already. We try to take on Hatterene with a pyro ball but it decides to set up a trick room and survive and instead of me taking it out she swaps out into her Hyperior right after. So I bring in my Aegislash instead to sack it so I can then safely swap in my Inteleon once the trick room has ran out. I then take it out with Surf, also finish off Hatterene with Hydro Pump, take out Hunchgrow with Hydro Pump too but Mega Mawile tanks it and takes me out with Play Rough instead. One more Pyro Ball from Missy and the two admins are defeated. They tell me to go and face their boss Giovanni right at the end of this dungeon and he has a powerhouse of a team. Luckily we have a very, very good partner in this battle. Lance the Dragon Master. In the double battle I decided to take Dragapult, Charizard and Rillaboom with me. And I started off by killing his Tapulele turn 1 with a wood hammer while Lance is setting up screens. I also do a ton of damage on Scrafty with Woodhammer and they take out a hard Dragapult and he brings in Dialga instead so I'd say that's an upgrade. I take out the Scrafty with a wood hammer and then it's Celesteela and Mewtwo versus me and Dialga. My Rillaboom falls very quickly, but Dialga is able to take out Celesteela with Thunderbolt. I then send out my own Dragapult and their extra drill comes in too. I hit a couple of Dragon Darts, killing the Mewtwo eventually, but he isn't really dead because he immediately Mega Evolves in Mega Mewtwo Y. One expanding force later and my Dragapult is down too. I'm up to my last Pokemon Charizard and Lance only has his Salamence left. We first tank an Expanding Force and the Salamence's Earthquake takes out Excadrill and I'm then able to finish off Mega Mewtwo Y with Flamethrower. His last Pokemon is a Tyranitar who takes down my Charizard but luckily Lance's Salamence was able to finish it off by healing up with Roost and killing it with two more Earthquakes. Once that battle is over Mewtwo escapes from his Master Ball and decides to use his Psychic Powers to totally destroy Cerulean Cave. We got out of there in time and somehow Team Rocket manages to escape once again. With the world saved we head back to Pewter City and see that Giovanni is not the gym leader anymore. He's been changed around for Claire. I decided to go in with a very decent team as you can see right here and I don't waste any more time because we have to take her down. Let's hope after the battle she does give me her gym badge if she loses. I start out with Inteleon and go for the Icy Wind on her first Pokemon Aerodactyl. She's able to set up some Stealth Rocks but eventually after I try to hit it with a second Icy Wind she swaps out into Dracovish. I do as much damage with Icy Wind as possible to lower its speed and eventually I do get taken out with Outrages. Dragapult then cleans it up with Dragon Darts but Magearna is a bit too strong for me so I have to get out of there. I bring in Aegislash and try to Swords Dance up. I'm able to set up two and just as I'm about to take down Magearna, she swaps out into her Mega Duraludon. I am able to do some very good damage with Shadow Sneak but it's still able to take me out with Dark Pulse. I once again clean it up with Dragon Darts, but there is Magearna again. This time I just bring in Cinderace and kill it with Pyro Ball, but Aerodactyl is a little bit too fast and Earthquakes me to kill me. I then take down Aerodactyl, Dragonite and Naganadal with Dragon Darts from Dragapult. Boom, 8th Gym Badge acquired. But before we can head on over to the Pokemon League, we have two more rival battles to do. First one is with Hop. And if you guessed that Cinderace once again pyro ball through everything, you were right. So no more wasting time, straight into the next Branham battle. Same thing happens here, almost everything gets pyro ball by Cinderace. But he did need a little bit of help from Mr. Mime's Frost Breath. One last trip through Victory Road and we're at the Pokemon League, baby. And here's where I started to craft up my team. I decided to go with a composition of Cinderace, Charizard, Dragapult, Mr. Rhyme, Rillaboom and Aegislash. I know I haven't used Rhyperior or Haxorus a lot, but the truth is they just really aren't that useful compared to all the other mods that Leon has. Anyway, with our stacked up team, I went ahead and challenged Lorelei. Since I wanted to face her ice type team, I decided to start off with two fire types against her Ninetales and Glaceon. They were able to hit me with a blizzard doing a lot of damage and also set up an Aurora Veil, but I took both of them down with Pyro Ball and Flamethrower. And the hail also took down my mighty Char. Charizard. So then I brought in Rillaboom and she brought in two water types, perfect timing. I swap out my Cinderace for Dragapult to save it for later and do a ton of damage with Woodhammer on Azumarill. I did get paralyzed but the next turn I U-turned out with Dragapult to take down the Azumarill and I also brought in Mim Yin. Then her Glastrier comes out, killing my Rillaboom with a Glacial Lance while I'm stuck hitting the Rodom Wash with a Freeze Dry. It doesn't even take it out 
but I still have my secret weapon, Messi, who is able to take down the Glacier with a single pyro ball. And while the Rotom also paralyzes me, my freeze dry takes it out this time. One last Pokemon to go, her Mega Obama Snow, one more Pyro Ball, one more kill. Time to move on to Bruno. Bruno was no problem at all as Cinderace dealt with his Sation by using Pyro Ball, Babo Drain punched his way through his Terrakion and Mega Lucario, and Charizard killed Conkeldur and Urshifu with Air Slashes and the final Pokemon Scizor with Flamethrower. Let's see if Agatha is a better martial artist than Bruno. Aegislash took care of his Grimmsnarl. I had to sack my Mr. Rhyme in order to bring in Dragapult safely so that he can take down Hydragon with Dragon Darts. He's also able to kill the next Pokemon Marshadow with Phantom Force and Dragon Darts. Spectre is somehow faster than me and kills me with Shadow Ball, so I try to take it down with Messi instead but I once again get one shot by Shadow Ball. Only one more Pokemon could take down this Demon Horse, so I threw out my Rillaboom, tanked the Shadow Ball with my Focus Sash, and killed it with one last Wood Hammer. Aegislash then took down Dragapult with Shadow Sneak, it simultaneously went down in the same turn, so now it's my last Pokemon Charizard against her ace Gengar. I'm able to tank a Thunderbolt with 13 HP remaining, counter back with a Flamethrower, and win my battle against the old hag. One more Elite Four member in my way before we can challenge our brother. And that guy is Lance. The first turn goes amazing. He starts out with Aerodactyl, I start out with Mr. Rhyme. I go for Frost Breath and get the Freeze, so I'm able to bring him down to his Sash, and at the end of the turn, the Frost Damage takes him down. But at least I'm able to do a lot of damage on his next Pokemon, Primal Dialga. I hit three Frost Breaths in a row and also freeze him. He only has a slither of HP remaining when he takes down my Mr. Rhyme, so Cinderace can clean him up with a Pyro Ball. However, I have to swap out into Aegislash because Dracovish is something I can't handle. I do a little bit of chip damage with Shadow Sneak, but then get taken out by Fish's Run. I then proceed to bring in my Dragapult and take him down with Dragon Darts just like the next Pokemon Dragonite. I then swap into my Rillaboom because Melmetal is once again something the Dragapult can't handle. A double Iron Bash takes me out. So I go into Cinderace, finish it off with Pyro Ball, but his last Pokemon is Mega Salamance, who double edges me and kills Cinderace. Luckily Dragapult is faster and with just a single Dragon Dart, Lance is defeated. So we step up to the champion room and challenge Hop to one final fight. But his team is absolutely insane, starting out with a Feromosa against my Charizard. And the only way for me to kill this in one turn is to hit this Inferno and get it burned. This brings her down to her sash, and at the end of the turn, the burn damage takes her out. The next Pokemon is the Mighty Eternatus, the one that Leon wasn't able to defeat, so let's see if he's able to do it now. I bring in my Aegislash, do a little bit of chip damage, but Lancelot dies right there and then. So instead, I bring in my Dragapult once again and take out Eternatus with Dragon Darts. For his Mega Metagross, I have to go into Charizard to sack it, so that I can go safely back into my Dragapult to use will o -Wisp because I'm Choice Scarfed. Now that the burn is on the Metagross, I can safely bring in my Cinderace and take it down with a Pyro Ball while tanking a Meteor Mash and a Zen Headbutt. His Primal Groudon is another life-threatening being. I once again chip damage it with Pyro Ball, and get taken out, so I swap into my Rillaboom. I go for an Earthquake, it misses its move, and as I'm about to take it out with another Earthquake, Yves Veltal comes out. So I go for Knockoff to get rid of the Assault Vest and also tank an Oblivion Wing. But that doesn't matter because Sucker Punch takes me out the next turn. I then go for Mr. Mom's Frost Breath to almost take down Yveltal, but it isn't quite enough, and a Dark Hole finishes off my second to last Pokemon. Dragapult can then finally come in and use Dragon Darts to take out Yveltal. I then also proceed to kill his Groudon because it's barely got any HP left. And his final Pokemon is an Imposter Ditto. So I face myself in the final battle. Luckily it's a speed tie and I'm able to kill it with one last Dragon Darts. And just like that, Leon claims his throne back and is now champion of the Kanto region's hardest drum hack. I had so much fun doing this run, I had a very limited team, but a very good core. There was always somebody I could fall back on. The team was super fun to play around with, changing around movesets and items in between battles. And if I had to choose an MVP of this run, I'd probably go for Cinderace. Pyro Ball really burns through the competition. But anyway, I can't wait for Radical Red to add Gen 9 Pokemon. But before that happens, I have a ton of amazing content lined up for you guys. So to end off the video, I want to say thanks to my membership and Patreon supporters for supporting the channel. If you want to do this yourself, you can click the links in the description. It is always appreciated, but not needed. 
And with all of that out of the way, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. I'm Zwigo, and I'll see you guys next time.